on behalf of the University of Miami and our Department of Athletics, I, I really appreciate you gathering around today. This is an exciting day for the Hurricanes as we introduce JT Arteaga as the 10th head coach in the history of the University of Miami Hurricane baseball team. The position of head coach at Miami requires someone with a mindset of a leader, a tactician, a teacher, a motivator, and a visionary. Someone who wakes up every day with the goal of helping our student athletes maximize their potential and get us to Omaha. I believe we found that in Coach J.D. Arteaga. We conducted a nationwide search for this position. We researched, we received, and we refined. We were careful in our approach, and we met with several talented candidates. But J.D. is someone who stood out from in the search process with good reason. He's a player's coach who's had incredible success with our pitching staff during the 21 years on our uh, Miami Hurricane coaching staff and helped our program earn 18 NCAA tournament appearances and six trips to the College World Series. J.D. has mentored 46 pitchers who have been selected in the Major League Baseball draft, including at least one each year over the past 19 years. We have had an All-American pitcher in each of the past four seasons and 12 All-American pitchers overall during J.D.'s tenure. That's a credit not only to his coaching acumen, but his player development skills. It also became apparent during the interview process that J.D. understands what it takes to build a championship roster and culture in today's world of college baseball. He knows firsthand what makes University of Miami baseball special, both on and off the field. He is connected to the University of Miami baseball community and has a vision, vision for Miami baseball that matches the vision of the university and the athletic department. J.D. is a Miami Hurricane through and through, and I'm confident that he is the right coach at the right time for one of the most storied baseball programs in the country. I'd like to thank our university administration, specifically President Frank, Joe Echeverria, Rudy Fernandez, and our Board of Trustees for their help throughout this search process. Their insight and support were valuable. It's now my pleasure to formally introduce the University of Miami's new head baseball coach, J.D. Arteaga. Thank you, Dan. Uh, first of all, I, I can't uh, be more appreciative of, the, of this opportunity given to me by, you know, by Dan and by uh, Joe and, and Rudy and, and President Frank. And uh, it's always been a dream. Um, it's always been a dream of mine that, uh, to play at the University of Miami. And from the day I became a coach is to, to be a head coach here at the University of Miami. I'll never forget the day. Um, it was a fall, or actually the spring of 2003. Um, I always came back in the off season and threw bullpens here, getting ready for my season. And I just got done with the bullpen and, and coach Morris came and sits next to me and, and asked me, you know, what, what do you want to do if, uh, if your baseball career doesn't work out, you know, as a player? I said, well, I, I want to coach, you know, and he goes, well, whatever I can do, let me know and I'll help you. And I said, well, there's only one problem. I'm not, I'm not leaving the city of Miami. And they said, well, your, your options are very limited. And I said, well, you asked me and I'm telling you, I'm going to be a college coach and I'm not leaving the city. So, um, little did I know, a few, uh, not even a month later, um, the opportunity came up and, and a coach called me. It was Sunday afternoon after pitchers and catchers workout in spring training with the Rangers and and basically offered me the job. Said, it's yours if you want it. If uh, if you don't, then I'm going to open it up and and start a search for the next pitching coach. And obviously, I, I took the job. And uh, here I am 21 years later. And, and again, my goal has always been to continue to move up and be loyal to the place that I love. And and wait my turn. And I'm, I'm so grateful that my time is, is, is here. And I'm, I'm, I'm so looking forward to taking uh, control of this uh, program and building it and, and bringing back some of the things that Frazier had and Coach Morris had. And, and But more than anything, just the success that we've had over the years. We need to get back to where we've been. Awesome. Thank you, JD. Thank you, Dan. I will now go into questions from our media members on the call. If you have a question for JD or Dan, please use the hand raise function. And we'll start off with Matt Shardell from Kane Sport. Matt. Oh, hey, JD. Congratulations, first of all. Um, yeah, I don't know if this question is for both of you or either of you, because it's uh, a question I don't understand the answer to. So uh, uh, something that's held the program back with the previous coaches is these half scholarships, quarter scholarships, and the tuition at Miami and the difference a player has to pay, right? Is, is there a way that a, a program like Miami, a private school, can make up for that to have an even playing field with the Vanderbilts of the world and the UFs of the world? Um, that seem to 
have student athletes on half scholarship that either don't pay or don't have to pay as much. JD, let me let me start here, and you can you can finish off. You know, it's a, it's a great question, um, but I think one of the things you have to look at is how many private institutions are at the highest level within college athletics, and specifically baseball, uh, where scholarships are 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 fractionalized, and you have to help fill that bucket in. Over the last few years, the university has moved forward and done a lot more things than maybe they had had it done in the past. Um, but part of our charge right now is to, again, go back and see how we can create better financial aid opportunities for student athletes um, within their scholarships, but also look and attempt to uh, you know, add on to that through the in introduction of NIL opportunities to our student athletes. So both of those buckets, whether it's financial aid or NIL opportunities can help ease the burden of what that cost might be here at the University of Miami. Yeah, you know, we're, we're in a much better place when, uh, like Dan said, when it comes to the financial aid component. Um, it, it was really good back in the nineties. I mean, you're, you're looking at a, at a, at a player that was here on financial aid, not on a baseball scholarship. And, and, and I was, you know, fortunate again, it didn't matter where the money came from, uh, the school was taken care of and we're in a much better place. Now we lost that for a little bit there in the, uh, from 2003 till about 2015 or 16. Um, but we're in a much better place now, um, than we were then. And, uh, like Dan said with the NIL, we, we, we got to pick up our, pick up the slack and, 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 and get that going. That's our number one priority right now. The, the, the game has changed and that's got to be priority number one right now. Appreciate it. Next, we'll go to Adam Lichtenstein from the Sun Sentinel. Adam? Hi, Dan and JD. Uh, congrats, JD. I guess I have a, one question um, for each of you. Uh, Dan, I guess just through the hiring process, um, what you said, you mentioned that JD stood out. What were some of the things, and you kind of expand on on what stood out about him? And then when uh, after that, JD, just um, having played here, coached here, uh, now being the head coach, what was that moment like when you know you learned that you would be the next head coach? What was that moment like for you? Well, from the search process, you know, JD is a, a lot of the the background that I talked about in my opening comments talked about his successes here as a as a uh, as a coach. So that that certainly uh, was important. But I think as you as you had it, I had an opportunity to get to know him a little bit better. Uh, it's really his his weaving into the community with it, with the alumni baseball players, uh, with with the city of Miami that really kind of helped set him apart. Um, that's important here in, in South Florida. And I think J.D., with his time here, uh, has exemplified the ability to go out into the community and help uh, really galvanize it around University of Miami baseball. At least that's what we want uh, to see happen even at a higher level than it, than it has already. So certainly his understanding of how to coach, the idea of being able to look at our, our recruiting process and, and expand it even beyond where we are now and his involvement in the community were all uh, really big factors. You know, for me, I was uh, before I was a player or a coach, I was always a fan, you know, and, and uh, I go and I root for football, not because it helps our budgets, because I'm a fan of the University of Miami and have a different passion for this place. Um, of course, no, no greater than baseball. And, and I understand we're now where we're supposed to be. And, and that bothers me to, as a fan as much as it would as a player and as a coach. Um, so I think that's one of the things that separates me from, I guess, some of the other candidates. It means a little bit more to me uh, when we lose or when I see that we're not where we're, where we're supposed to be, where we're accustomed to being. Um, and you're going to get everything I got, everything in my power to get us back to where we, where we belong and at the top of college baseball here. As a reminder, if you have a question for JD or Dan, please use the hand raise function. Next, we'll go to Marcus Benjamin. Marcus. Hi, this question is for JD. Uh, uh, Dan Radakovich mentioned that it became apparent to him that you were the right person for the job. What are some of the areas that you see that need to be attacked uh, for this program to get back for this program to get back to where it used to be? Well, the game has changed. I mean, the game has changed, whether, you, whether you're talking analytics or sports science or, or, or the NIL world, you know, it's changed. And, and I think we're, we are behind in those things. I and mean, we've got to make a change and catch up to the rest of the of the country. I mean, you, you watch the two teams that are left playing right now, and there's, there's, there's no doubt that they're above and beyond and ahead of everybody as far as the NIL world is concerned. And, and they've got some guys on that team that they picked up in the portal. And it, that... Um, like it or not, that's where we're at, you know, and we got to change that. And then you can go turn to a, a wake forest and, you know, they're ahead of everybody when it comes to sports science and analytics, you know, and, uh, 
my goal, my my vision, my what I'm gonna get done is we're gonna catch up to those guys, and we're gonna from the analytics to the sports science, the NILs, and and make Miami what it's supposed to be, the best college baseball program in the country. Our next question comes from Meadow Barrow. Meadow, uh, this question is for JD. Um, how different is it now um, being the person that's making the final decisions? How different is it now for you? Well, it's going to be different, but I'm, I'm fortunate, uh, you know, Coach Morris from, from the get-go. And you got to understand, I, you know, this is a big job as a head coach, and I've never been a head coach. I understand that. But I also was never a coach, period, uh, before I, I became the pitching coach at the University of Miami. And, and that's a that's a pretty big job, too. And and, and I was fortunate that Morris kind of – not kind of – he let me be the pitching coach, you know, and it was my staff, and I was, in essence, the head coach of the pitchers. At the end of the day, he had the final say, but – you know, a lot of things went through me and, and, and he bounced you know, ideas and, and asked me a lot. And I was his, his associate head coach for, for five years, as I was associate coach for Gino DeMar for five years. So um, is it different? I haven't noticed any difference yet because I've only had the job for a few hours. So um, maybe I could answer that question a little better. Um, but I think I'm prepared for it by the way that, you know, again, Coach Morris allowed me to do my job the way Gino allowed me to do my job. And and I was considering myself the head coach for the pitchers and um but at the end, of it, it is it still is a group effort. But as far as you know, what it's like to make those final decisions, I haven't made one yet. Um, so I, I could answer that question here shortly, but not right now. Now you mentioned um, um, former coach Gino. H have you heard from him, or did you hear from I, him after the decision? Yes, after the decision, and and again, I was uh, everybody was surprised by the decision. I'm not sure, still don't know why he did it, but that, that's uh, up to him. But he's. Uh, Again, a decision that, that he made and a decision I'm sure he's comfortable with and his reasons, you're going to have to ask him. But uh, yeah, I think he's, he's in a good place right now. Are you looking for a pitching coach to take your place? I, I am. Um, you know, that's one of the first things we got to do is, is is get a staff together. And and, and Dan and myself are going to work together to, to put the best group around me um, to help us win and get back. So um, I just think I've been doing been the pitching coach for a long time, I, and I understand it is a full time job. I think you throw on top of that the responsibilities of a head coach; uh, it, it makes it pretty difficult. So um, it will be someone that I trust, someone that I, that that uh, again the the big word is that I trust that it's gonna, I'm going to hand him the uh, the job, and and it's his to run with it. Uh, I've learned from again Coach Morse. You got to let you got to hire people because they're good at what they do. You can't micromanage and 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 have a hand in everything they're doing. So. My plan is yes to, to hire a head coach. Uh, I'm sorry, pitching coach. Thank you. Our next question comes from Adam Lichtenstein. Adam, hi again, um, JD. Just having worked on you know UM staff for more than 20 years, working with Coach Morris, working with Gino. What are some of the biggest things you've learned about being a head coach? Well, again, it's it's surrounding your people with surrounding yourself with the right people, um, understanding what my strengths and weaknesses are. I got to surround myself with some people that are going to pick up the slack on areas that that I'm not as good at, and and I'm not perfect. No one's perfect, but it, under self awareness and understanding of what you need to surround yourself with is very important. Um, whether it be you know, a good recruiter or a good hitting coach or, or pitching guy or defense, whatever it might be, you got to surround yourself with the right people, and again, have the confidence that you made the right decision and 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 allow those people to do their job. Um, and, and Morse was a, a great, I learned a lot about from practice, a heck of a lot from game management. Um, still to this day, he's, he's by far the best game manager I've ever been around as far as running a bullpen, um, you know, pinch hitting, pinch hitting, any moves you had to make during a game. I think uh, he's he's still, to me, arguably the best there, there's ever been. So, um, and and with Gino's, the practices, you know, our practices were a little different. There was just, there was more more emotion behind it. There was more, you know, everything was a little more aggressive. It's it just, you know, it was much better in the practice side of it. Um, but you, you learn a little bit from everybody. Um, talking to other head coaches, talking to other pitching coaches. We, we never we never have anything figured out. When you think you do, you're in trouble. And one thing I'd like to think of myself is that I'm very coachable and, and I understand I could always get better. Every day you either get better or you get worse. You're never going to stay the same. You know, so I'm always looking to get better in any in every aspect. And then just about, you know, about uh, you know, finding the people to surround yourself with. Do you have a timeline or where, where you want to be for what, uh, filling out the uh, the assistant coaching spots? I want to say a timeline. I think the most important thing here is, is making the right decisions. Um, I'm not going to rush into anything. Um, we have some ideas of, of guys, people that we uh, we want here, but uh, we're going to take our time and make sure we make the, the right decisions for, for for the program. At the end of the day, it's for the program. we got to have the best staff possible. 